part of my job has been working with migratory birds to help ensure that our trust responsibilities for protection of migratory birds have been fulfilled. More than 10 years ago, Bandelier National Monument was identified as an important bird area within New Mexico. Important bird areas aren't only national park areas, but they're habitats around the state, and they're actually around the country and around the world, which hold special importance for migratory birds and resident birds. How do we track bird populations? How do we ensure that the populations are healthy? It's actually not an easy question. There are several methods. In terms of all the different ways that we can count birds or monitor birds or track bird populations, the gold standard is what we call bird banding. For bird banding, the main tool that we use to capture birds are mist nets. These are nets that have very thin threads. They become invisible when in the right setting. We call it extraction. We just try to be really gentle with the bird. Uh, when we get it out, we try to put it in a bander's grip so it's not going to wiggle away around and, and try to fly out. They can injure themselves, so put them in the bander's grip. Always get it off both wings before you try the head if you can. Yeah, I just was getting the legs free. Yeah, best way to see the wings again is on its back. And then you can uh, gently take the net um, Sometimes you start on the feet and you uh, try to gently pull the net off the feet and gently take it off the wings and hopefully then just over the head and the bird's out. <laughs> Yay! Typically the birds are fine, we take them back to the banding table and we start the what we call the physical exam or the processing. We basically put the band on the bird first after we've identified the species. The bands close easily with a special plier. No other bird in the, in the continent gets that band number. And then we measure things like wing length. Wings are curved, like the curve on a circle, and we measure that curvature. We measure tail length. We look for body fat by blowing on the bird and parting the feathers gently. We can see down to the skin, and in certain places on the bird's body, we can see fat. This is a chipping sparrow. Um, it's obvious by the red in the crown um, and then also the large bill. Uh, it's a very common species that we catch here in northern New Mexico. Uh, I was able to age it using the feathers and the amount of red in the crown. Um, as you can see, he's growing two new feathers here. Um, so what we did with this bird was we caught it in a mist net, we put a small band on its leg with a number that is individual to this bird, so when we catch it again we can know the information uh, that we obtained whenever we caught it. Um, so yeah, I took its mass, I took uh, its wing and weight, and uh, aged it, sexed it, and found out how much fat it has, and a couple other um, indices, and now he's ready to go. So I'm going to release it. I mean, it's a pretty cool job. This is our office. You get to have hands-on with wildlife, and um, instead of sitting in front of a computer, we get to interact with species that are around here, moving through. Pretty neat, every day is different. One aspect of the migratory bird monitoring program at Bandelier National Monument actually has more to do with education than it has to do with monitoring. We bring every year international interns from Central and South America to the park to learn how to ban birds, how to monitor birds, how to identify birds. I'm from Mexico. I'm the International Volunteer Interchange intern. Enjoying so much, I'm learning so much. This is an awesome park that has these spectacular views, spectacular trees, and a spectacular awesome birds. They really enliven the landscape with their songs and their colors when they arrive every spring from places farther south, stay several months, and then in the late summer and early fall, they return to places farther south.